Hey traders, welcome back. So this training video is another example of what we call highly non-correlated, wildly diversified strategies. We try really hard in our model portfolio inside of our live trading room to have at any given time 15 to 25 different non-correlated, wildly diversified strategies. Non-correlated meaning that if the market goes down, some of our stuff will go up, right? So they don't all move in the same direction. And this training module is on our gold trade, which has just been fabulous. It's just absolutely been awesome. We've been doing this trade now for years and years and years, but we've been doing it on silver inside of our AST investing program, our asymmetric trading program. And so we have just recently started up a new iteration of this, but we're using gold and we're doing it inside of our live trading room. So I wanted to share this overview for you on what I call turning gold into cash, or in other words, how to take a dead asset and turn it into a cash flow machine. And I know that I am going to offend some people in this video tutorial, uh, but gold is absolutely a dead asset. It is absolutely a dead asset. Uh, there are gold bugs out there that are going to be very upset with this, but the facts are what the facts are. But it's interesting that you can take a dead asset like gold and you can turn it into an absolute cash flow machine. All right, so let's get into this, talking about how to turn gold into cash. This is really uh, an amazing cash flow machine, especially when you look at what gold has done in the past. So there's a couple of things to think about, a couple of things to talk about as we look at gold. One of them is making sure that we look at setups. We look at trades based on the probabilities of making money, okay? And the reason that I say that is that there are a lot of emotions tied up in precious metals, silver, but primarily gold. You've heard the phrase or the term gold bugs. These are people that are all in on gold. They think gold is the end all be all. And it reminds me a little bit of the, uh, the uh, Wall Street bets uh, apes, the people that are all in on AMC. Look, AMC is a bankrupt company. It is by the very definition of bankruptcy, bankrupt. It has a negative share value of almost $4. That's bankruptcy, right? When you have more liabilities than assets, you are bankrupt. Uh, it has a, a quick ratio and a current ratio well under one. It meets all of the qualifications for bankruptcy. It is a, 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 a company that is a dead company walking and it is bankrupt. Nobody has just bothered to tell it yet, but you can't tell that to a person that absolutely loves AMC. They think it's going to go to the moon. They think they're going to get rich off of the earth. It, it's crazy. Kind of takes uh, that, that kind of happens here with gold. You have these gold bugs that are all in on gold. Gold has been a horrible, horrible investment. It is an absolutely dead asset, but it can make you rich if you have the right approach to managing it. So let's talk a little bit about the situation with gold. Okay, with every trade, with every asset, with every setup. There are always pros and cons, and gold is no different, right? So there are some benefits and some downsides to gold. Some of the benefits of gold is that it is non-equity correlated, and that's a big one. We really are big proponents of that in our trading room of having strategies and setups that if the market goes down, our positions might even go up. We are really big on that in our AST investing program. It can be or has thought to be a hedge against inflation. Uh, when prices go crazy, 
gold usually will keep up with that, or at least that's the idea. Uh, relative price stability, uh, it, it does fluctuate obviously in price, but it generally has a little bit more price stability than say the stock market. And uh, of course it can at times offset the perennial weakness that we have in the dollar as the value of the dollar just erodes and erodes and erodes over time. Uh, deflation protection, it can help us protect against deflation as well as inflation. Political uncertainty is something that we don't talk about too much in the United States, but it doesn't mean that we are immune from that. And it is nice to have an idea that, hey, I could have something uh, that could you know, work as currency if we were to have political uh, instability. Now, there's a couple other things that I think are big pushes as benefits for gold and, and silver and other precious metals. One is supply constraints and the other is increasing demand. So really for whatever type of precious metal you're looking at, even if it's palladium or, or some of the other areas of precious metals, we have an increasing demand. The demand for gold, the demand for silver is ever increasing. And of course we have supply constraints. There's only so much gold on the face of the earth and they're not making any more of it. And so as it gets harder and harder to find more and the demand continues to rise, supply demand, prices should reflect that and push upwards, right? And then of course the other benefit is diversification, which again, we are huge proponents of in our trading room. It's always very important, it's always very prudent, I believe, to have an asset class that is not tied to everything else. Diversification really shouldn't mean spreading your money around. It should be having assets that move in different ways. And uh, gold can be a good one for that. But there are some downsides to gold as well. One is that this whole idea that it is an inflation hedge, yeah, history is not too kind to that belief. Yes, we had a little spike here recently in the last couple of years as inflation has pushed up. Yes, we had a little spike, actually a pretty big spike in gold uh, in the early 80s when Jimmy Carter did his best to ruin the economy. Um, but other than that, it really has not matched inflation rates very well. So I don't think it really is the inflation hedge that we hope or think that it is. The other issue, of course, that's huge is carry costs. Now listen, before you gold bugs just go all crazy on me. I, I love gold. I love silver. Uh, I, I, I have big bars of gold and silver. I love it. This is a hundred ounce bar of silver. Uh, I never ever think I'm going to make any money with this. This is a very cool conversation piece. It is a very, very heavy paperweight is what it is. Uh, I, I don't know what actual purpose in terms of building my net worth, this is going to do for me. So again, I think it's interesting. I like the ideas about it, but the carry costs of this are huge. I relate it to raw land. Now in real estate, there's all kinds of real estate that you can do, right? Uh, residential, commercial, uh, th th there's all kinds of real estate investing you can do. Raw land, vacant land can be one of the most powerful returns that you can get in investing in real estate. But raw land has tremendous carry costs, meaning if you're gonna buy a piece of land on the outskirts of growth, try to hold it for 10 years, anticipating that growth is gonna move that way and you're gonna be able to sell that piece of land a decade later for maybe five times, maybe six, seven times your original investment. That's a great rate of return, right? But for those six or seven years, you are paying maybe some insurance premiums, you are paying property taxes, there's overhead, there's drag on that investment. There's nothing coming in, but there's stuff going out. I, you know, there, I don't know, the, the 100 ounce here, this is probably worth 2,300 bucks, something like that. It's probably 2,300 bucks in this. Um, and I, I, it's not making me a single penny. You know, that's $2,300 that I could have someplace else earning me a uh, rate of return. In addition to the carry costs, uh, there is no income generation. And this is a big, big factor, right? Real estate has rental income. Stocks have dividend income. Bonds have 
interest income. Uh, you know, I held real estate. I had rental properties in 2008 when uh, we had this massive financial collapse. A lot of rentals, a lot of uh, residential single family homes, those properties went down in value by 40% where I live. Down by 40%. Places like Las Vegas and Arizona and Florida, they were down, and parts of California, or they are down 50 to 60%, right? But it was okay because the income just kept pouring in. The asset, the real estate, it was going up and down in value, but the income never stopped. The income just kept coming in. There is no income generation with gold. That's a big problem. Uh, it doesn't yield anything, okay? Poor relative return performance. This is probably the biggest one. Gold stinks in terms of its rate of return. It has a horrible, horrible track record of performance. And, uh, you know, the past does not always equal the future. But if you look at the return on gold over the last few decades, I don't think anybody's very impressed by that. So, again, not great returns. And then also, you know, it's cumbersome to buy and sell this. Now, uh, I have bought and sold gold and silver bullion bars before. You know the way I sell this? If silver was to double in value, I would probably sell this. And the way I would sell it is eBay. I would place an ad on eBay. I would pay fees for that ad. I would have to go through uh, and get a buyer. They would pay me in a credit card. I would have to lose money there. I would have to pay money to pay to eBay for the transaction. I would have to pack it up. I'd have to take it to the post office. It's not quite the same deal as just pushing buttons on your computer to buy and sell stocks. So it can be cumbersome to sell and buy. It's a little difficult of an asset to work with, right? So what does that all mean for us? Well, let's look at those returns. Here's the returns of gold. This, this, is, this is what gold has done, folks, going back a 100 years. So this is the entire history of gold. Now, I don't put a lot of credence into the value of gold back in here prior to the 70s, the 1970s, because gold was price controlled by the US government. And so it really was 1971 when uh, President Nixon took us off the gold standard that gold started to trade underneath its own merit. Water seeks its own level. This happened to be where that level was at that time. It reminded me, or it reminds me a lot of when shorting became available on Bitcoin. So you guys know the story of Bitcoin, you know, it just took off and it went up and up and up and up and up. And it seemed like there was no end to it moving to the upside until they made the availability of shorting Bitcoin. And the general public was now able to not only buy Bitcoin, but short it. And now all of a sudden you saw the price coming back down because water started to seek its own level. And there was an equilibration that took place as you now had sellers being able to meet the buyers rather than just only buyers. And uh, this is what happened to gold here in 1971. Nixon took us off the gold standard. Gold found sort of its equilibrium. And then, of course, uh, in the late 70s and uh, early 80s, Jimmy Carter just absolutely exploded the economy with some horrible economic decisions. Great guy, awesome human being. Uh, but uh, just absolutely a horrible president, and he destroyed the, the economy. I was a kid. I remember having a passbook savings account that I would put my uh, little gas, my, my the money that I would make by uh, mowing the lawn, I would put that in the passbook savings account. 15% interest is what I was earning in my little savings account. 15% interest. So this spike right here, yeah, it did its job, I guess, in terms of hedging against that inflationary environment. But I think that was maybe a little bit of a unique situation. And now, of course, if you fast forward to today, you can see where we are. Guys, we're lower right now. Gold is lower in price right now than it was in 1980. It hasn't gone anywhere. And the bigger issue is the carry costs that we talked about. This is the difference here between what the stock market has done and what gold has done. See, it isn't just about putting your money in an asset 
that is not going up in value. That's not what this is about. It isn't the fact that, that silver is not going up in value. It is about the fact that I have $2,300 tied up in here that is not earning me a rate of return, right? I should be earning two or $300 a month off of this, not zero. And so there's this huge carry cost that is involved in the process. So some of the hard truths with gold, some of the reasons why I call it a dead asset. Number one, there's no growth engine for gold. Why has the return on gold been so horrible? Well, there's no growth engine, right? Love or hate Elon Musk, believe or don't believe in electric vehicles, uh, think that Tesla is overvalued or undervalued, it doesn't matter, right? You would have made a lot of money had you invested in Tesla from the get-go. And in hindsight, it's pretty easy to figure out why. Uh, Tesla has grown pretty consistently at 40 to 50% a year, 40 to 50% a year, year after year after year after year. When the value of your company is doubling every couple of years for a, over a decade, you should have some growth, right? Well, there's no growth engine behind gold. It is just simply a supply demand issue. And so there's nothing really to push gold higher. Gold, as I said, is lower today than it was in 1980. I don't know how good of a salesman you have to be. There's so many gold bugs out there, but I don't know how good of a salesman you have to be to come to you and say, listen, I've got this investment that I want you to put your hard-earned money in. It hasn't gone anywhere in 42 years. And you're like, yeah, that sounds great. Let's put my money there. But that's gold. That is the essence of gold, right? We also talked about the holding costs. But here's the thing, again, the holding costs here are not the fact that I have $2,300 invested in this bar of silver. The holding costs are that that $2,300 is not generating any income from it. And so it is interesting right here, I'll give you a little quick calculation, $10,000 at just 5% a year. It's 5% a year is not a huge outlandish rate of return. $10,000 at 5% a year over 42 years which is the length of time that gold has gone nowhere, would have turned that 10000 into $81,000. So again, it's not just about putting ten grand in gold in 1980 and still having ten grand today. It's about the fact that you should have 81000 at a bare minimum. But the holding costs are just absolutely exorbitant. Okay, uh, Gains are largely based on the greater fool theory. Now, what do we mean by the greater fool theory? I've made a lot of money on investments that are based on the greater fool theory. Rally uh, dot R Rally Road is a web, no, not a not a product paid product endorsement, but I love Rally Road. They have collectibles. They have memorabilia. Uh, I have invested there in fractional shares of high end exotic cars, uh, wine collections baseball cards, very rare baseball cards, uh, a bat owned by Babe Ruth, all kinds of cool things. These are all collectibles. Uh, and, and, and they're awesome. They're fun. They're exciting. But they are all based, valuation-wise, on the greater fool theory. Uh, a Van Gogh painting uh, was purchased four years ago for $18 million. It just recently resold for $24 million. Why is it worth $24 million today and it was worth $18 million a few years ago? Well, there's nothing intrinsically that has raised the value of that painting. It is, in fact, what's called the greater fool theory, meaning you purchase something for X amount of money and you are going to need a greater fool to come along and purchase it from you to keep the prices moving up. And then he's going to need a greater fool to come along to purchase from him. There's no nothing intrinsically that's happening with that Van Gogh to make the prices rise. So maybe gold goes up, but it's not really dependent on a growth engine or a fundamentals of any kind. It's just basically uh, on the greater fool theory, right? So that's a problem. So how do we take this, what seems to be a horrible investment, and turn it into one of the most amazing ones that we have inside of our trading room. Well, number one, we are not going to own physical gold and silver. We're not going to keep buying it like this. We're going to use the GLD, ticker symbol GLD, which is the ETF for gold. It's traded on the stock exchange. 
and we're going to go out on the options chain one week at a time one week maturities and then we're going to ladder overlay this trade that means that every single week we're going to put another trade on top of the existing trade so we have trades sitting on top of each other and we're diversifying the strike prices we're diversifying the levels that we're in on these trades at so we have these ladder overlays going in the goal of these credit strangles is just one and a half percent a week roi that's what we're shooting for is 1.5 percent return per week it doesn't sound like a whole lot but i'm going to show you how powerful that can be over time if you can do it consistently if you can do it consistently right so each one of these credit strangles takes about twenty five hundred dollars of buying power and then we're going to have two of them with a ladder simultaneously at all times so it's about five thousand dollars that will commit to the strategy the income target is about a hundred and sixty five dollars per week per ladder so for every 2500 bucks we're going to try to make about 165 dollars uh in, in each week's segment right now i mentioned earlier that we have been doing this for years and years but we've been doing it with silver and we've been doing it inside of our ast investing program so now we're we're, we're, we're taking the same strategy we're using it with gold we're using it inside of our live trading room but here's an example taken uh, from today. This is from today, a, a actual position that we have in our AST investing program. It's on silver. You can see a couple of numbers here. You can see that I've got about $1,000, roughly $1,000 tied up in this trade. And uh, you can see, like, let me grab some, some, some areas to make some notes here, about $1,000 tied up in that trade uh, you can see it is a credit strangle silver right now is trading for seventeen dollars and twenty seven cents it is basically a week out we got eight days to expiration here you can see and uh, basically we are saying that hey we would be short silver at 1850 we would be long it at 1550 we brought in a total of thirty two dollars credit on this trade so i put up about a thousand dollars i brought in 32 dollars. this trade was actually about a 10 day long trade so it's just a little bit above one and a half percent a week in income now what does that mean well our buying power in these silver trades varies but this is pretty typical right here this is going to usually be about a thousand dollars of buying power put into this strategy and you can see our numbers right here if you go year to date so this is going back to uh the first of january right here that's the first of january to today uh, september 29th 2022 you can see that we've grossed 928 dollars we've had some fees from commissions and fees from the broker they always get their cut but our net so far this year on this particular strategy with silver is $762 net income January through today on about $1,000 of capital. Guys, that equates to almost 100% a year. Almost 100% a year. You only need to double $2,000 nine times to turn it into a million bucks. This is a powerful strategy. This is a really, really powerful strategy. So we're doing this now on gold okay and again what's interesting about this you know we're on pace to make almost a hundred percent rate of return on this strategy this year using it on silver in our AST program look what silver has done this year you wouldn't look at a chart that looks like this and think that you were making much money thinking that you you know to show that chart to somebody and say isn't that wonderful I'm gonna make a hundred percent return on that asset this year they would laugh at you but that's basically where we're at with silver and what's interesting is that gold is actually worse gold the trend for gold this year has been even worse and we actually have a little bit higher potential in the gold than we do in silver to do this strategy so again it doesn't matter with this strategy it doesn't matter where the gold is going up whether it's going down whether it is staying the same that's the beauty of this approach and how powerful is it? Well, I want to be careful with this. 
The disclosures, we always give the disclosures. There's no guarantees in the market. I can't make you any promises. It's against the law to make any promises, assumptions, or guarantees in the stock market because that's just not how the stock market works. So the assumptions that I'm going to give you here are already telling you they're going to be wrong. They are going to be wrong because the assumptions are, hey, let's take 12 grand. Let's put it into this strategy. Let's let it grow at 1.5% a week. Let's do it for nine years and let's cut Let's cut back a little bit, right? Let's not put it in at 1.5% a week. Let's take, uh, let's chop some of that off. Let's go down to just 70% a year, okay? Maybe there's some weeks we don't do it. Maybe there's some weeks that we lose money on it. So let's try to be conservative, back it down a little bit to 70% a year. And let's compound this, not 52 weeks a year. Maybe we take a couple weeks off. So let's compound it 50 weeks a year instead of 52. That $12,000 could turn into six million bucks. Now, again, I'm telling you right now, these numbers are wrong, right? To take any strategy and extrapolate it out at any given return over a nine year period of time, my gosh, we don't know what we're gonna make in the next three days, let alone nine years from now, right? But you have to make assumptions based on something and this is the best we have is a mathematical calculation. So if anything else, I guess, obviously, I tell you right now that that's wrong. But number two, what that does show you is what the potential of the strategy is. I think if most people could see a strategy that you could take 12 grand and turn it into 6 million in nine years, and that was a real true potential, you may say, hey, maybe I don't make 6 million, but I can see the potential. I think it's probably worth learning and honing my craft at this strategy, right? So again, we have been doing this strategy for multiple years in our AST program with silver. We have just started it recently. Well, 825 is when we just started it uh, in our live trading room with GLD, with gold. And so far today, we are six trades in on this. Every, and I think this this is nice. This, this is good, right? Because we do want consistency in our results. It doesn't matter if you have a trade that makes you 100% return if every other trade ends up at a loss, right? So consistently, ultim consistency ultimately at the end of the day is going to be really what determines your success. But the thing that I, I, I was already counting on this, I was already counting on this because I've seen it, we've done it for years and years and years in AST, we've just done it with silver. What I was really happy about was this. I didn't know if we were going to be able to consistently find setups that could bring in that one and a half percent a week, uh, almost six percent a month, but we've been able to find it. We've been able to find it. In fact, every single one of our six trades that we've done so far has actually been above that number. And that's what really excites me about that strategy. So this is the overview of our gold trade. It's an awesome trade. It is an absolutely awesome trade. So hopefully those of you that are in the trading room, this helps you understand it a little bit better. If you're not in our trading room and you'd like to give it a go, you'd like to give it a try, we have a free one-week trial that you can jump in and give it a go. There's no cost. There's no obligation. You can jump in for a week. You can trade alongside of us. You can ask us questions. You can interact with us. And so I will drop a link in the description box below. Uh, if you did something that you want to check out, jump in. Have a Zoom session with me. Let's talk one-on-one, -on -one, see what you're doing with your trading. And I promise you, I will do my darndest to try to find something that I can find in what you're doing to try to help you to be a better trader. So that's it for our gold trade, guys. Thank you so much. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Otherwise, best of luck to all of you in your trading. We'll talk to you soon.